Hey Tabby friends, in this video I would like to show you how you can run PAL games on an NTSC Atari computer. Now I would like to dispute a myth. First, all NTSC games will run correctly and fine on a PAL Atari computer. But not all PAL games will run on an NTSC machine. This is a 130XC NTSC Atari computer and I would like to try and run some of the PAL games that I have here. So let's start with the first game called Blinky Scary School. It was written in the UK. It's run fine on a PAL Atari computer but does strange thing on a, an NTSC machine. So let's start the game. And as you can see, the game is very weird. You try to move left and the character is stuck. If you try to move right, it starts all the way from the left corner. If you move here, you can see there is a double image on the bottom. Some of the screen are crooked and it's really behave strange. You can't really play the game this way. Let's try another game. Let's try Alchemia by Mirage Software in Poland. Let's get the game to load. Very nice intro screen. But the screen flickering and it doesn't work. You can't really jump or just do anything in this game. And that's mainly due to the VBI. In PAL, we have a 25 frames per second, 625 scan lines, while in NTC, we have 30 frames per second, 525 scan lines. So in NTSC, the VBI is one every 60 seconds, while in PAL is one every 50 seconds. So timing is different between PAL and NTSC machine. So if the game is uh, very delicate on timing, it won't work the same on an NTSC machine. Let's try another game. It's another Polish game. That's for, that game completely frees up. You can, can do anything here. We have probably have a demo here. Yeah, let's try a demo. Yeah, you see the screen flicker, jumps around. If you move to the next stage of the demo, Also screen, the VBI is really messed up, timing is really incorrect, and even if you're going to try and start and watch the demo, you will see that the screen uh, will jump and, and it's really worthless, you can't really enjoy the demo here. So what are we going to do to fix that? First, the oldest if you have an older model, then you're mostly lucky. Uh, the older your Atari is, most likely the processors inside will come on sockets. So let's try to open, I already removed the four screws on this 130XE computer, so you can easily pop it out. And I also already removed the RF shield so we can just uh, take out the keyboard and lay it. So this is a 130XE and we are very lucky here because we can see that all the other chips are soldiered except for the Antic. So the Antic chip is the second chip from the top. Let's see if you can see it 
better this way. This is the second chip from the top right here on the 130XE. And on, a, on an 800 computer, this is a 800 Excel a, a motherboard. You can see it's the second chip from the left. That's the antique chip. So the older model or a production of your Atari, most likely you will get them already come, uh, all the chips come on sockets. So the only thing that you have to do is to take the antique chip out. And if you have an NTSC, the part number of the antique chip will be either CO21697 or CO12296. That would be that chip over here. And we're going to change that and put instead a PAL antique chip. The part number for the PAL antique chip is uh, CO21698. And you can get one from BNC or Best. They sell those. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a, a flathead screwdriver and gently remove the antique chip from the socket, do it uh, uh, gently so you won't bend any pins. Let's see if it can be removed already. Do it very gently so you will not bend any pins on the antique chip that you are just removing out. We take out the NTSC antique chip and we're going to put instead the PAL. Just gently push in the PAL antique. So once we've done that, we can close the computer. You can put the RF shield back. Let's close the case. And let's boot the computer. So we just replaced the antique chip and that's it. We can try and run the games again. Let's try run Alchemia, the first one on the list. By changing the antique chip, you basically cause the VBI to work at a PAL rate. So now the game does not flicker, graphics works correctly. And we can go on and play the game. Let's try the another game. Let's try the game that hangs completely. Now the game does not hang. You can go in. And you can play the game. Let's try the blinky game. Which I think is a great game for Halloween. Now, if you have a modern monitor, then you are pretty much set up. The new monitor that can accept both VGA can work both in PAL and NTSC automatically. If you have an older monitor, a CRT monitor, which is only NTSC, then you better try to find a Commodore. The Commodore 1084 can, CRT monitor can work on both PAL and NTSC modes. So you see now the game works correctly. Screen is not flaky. You can move around. And you can go and try and, and play this very nice graphical uh, uh, enjoyable game. Let's look at the demo.
the demo that was uh, See the screen does not flicker, did not flicker when we uh, went to the first stage. And it also did, it works great and correct on the second stage. And let's see the demo itself, how it plays. Yep, yeah, so that's all, that's all you need. Just get the antique chip, replace it. You don't have to change anything in the OS. The Atari computer does check if the Atari, if the computer is NTSC or PAL by looking at flag D1, D014 of the GTA chip, GTIA. But do not change the GTIA because if you do change the GTIA, then you, your color will be messed up. The GTIA is depending on the crystal and uh, PAL and NTSC has different crystal uh, rate. So do not change the GTIA. What you, do, what you can do, if you have a software that looks and detect if it's a PAL or NTSC and prevent from playing the game, which I probably would, rec would say that only demos test if you have an NTSC machine, so the demo will not play and will not have, you don't have to see those uh, flicker screens. So if you have a software, you can tweak the operating system and basically force, force it to, to say that it is a, a PAL, even though that you have an NTSC motherboard. But most of the games and most of the demos, you just have to change the antique chip and you are set. So that's all. Look for your... Uh, NTSC computer and if you do have an NTSC just look for a PAL antique chip just replace the antique chip and you can enjoy both NTSC game and PAL games on your Atari computer and that's all thank you for watching